everybody is me today. You know, we got to be careful with popular facts and popular beliefs. Why I say that is because the very elite of the world can use them to, to fuel their goals and agenda by counterattacking that popular common belief, uh, common fact. And you would think that it's not them because they use a different name. But you got to understand the same organizations and the same corporations that are in bed with the very elite organizations, corporations, will always have the answer to the elite corporations and organizations. So in reality, you see, that counterattack is actually going to help fuel their goals and agenda. Keep people maybe in a submissive point you know, in their lives when they could revolutionize and come together and realize that it's the people that's going to make this difference. Not necessarily companies and organizations, whether political or economic. I have here the Wall Street Journal, uh, March 5th, 2014, an article titled Encrypted phones emerge to keep praying eyes out. Okay. Now we can all understand the common popular fact and belief, which many people consider uh, self-evident to an extent, is that the NSA, the National Security Agency, has been tracking people through their phones. Okay. Here in this article, it states that there's a company. Uh, that create smartphones and that uh, create cheaper cell phone plans as well. That secure smartphones, which then can protect the users from the praying eyes of government and corporations. Okay. It's a Los Angeles based company called Freedom Pop. Freedom Pop, P O P such as popular music or popular culture or popular opinion. It offers cheap cell phone plans and is backed by investment firm Mangrove Capital Partners and Skype. You know, many people may uh, remember NQTEL. NQTEL is the investment arm of the CIA, which invests in technology to help uh, track people Individuals, criminals, uh, people they think is criminals. Mind you, the CIA thought Martin Luther King and many other civil rights leaders during the time of the civil rights in the 1960s were criminals as well. They thought MLK was a criminal and was on their Cointel Pro list as someone who, uh, if didn't keep their neutral position, they would have to kill and destroy <clears throat> the CIA, by the way. America's made up of nothing but beliefs, ideologies, and philosophies that they push on people. They have their own set of principles, values, philosophies, and ideologies. So it's not good for any American organization, political or economic, to uh, have that type of control over anybody. They can see what goes in and comes out and have an airtight system set on them. It's not natural. But we must look at this Mangrove Capital Partners. It is a fund manager operating investment vehicles established as regulated investment companies subject to authorization and supervision. Here it is. This is a company that wants to uh, give people more power over their privacy. And here it is, the very investment uh, arm of, of the that, that basically um, funds Freedom Pop, this company, is under supervision of a whole other organization. This organization is called Commission de Surveillance du Sector Financial, which is abbreviated CSSF. Okay. One can better understand counterattacks of the CSSF by simply looking up the memorandum of understanding between CSSF and the Israel Securities Authority, ISA. Of 
course, this will be on the exchange of information and surveillance of activities. As that was the contract signed with them. So they already are doing business. It's an organization that's funding them or a firm that's funding them that's doing business already with a, a security agency. So. And everyone knows that if you take away an organization's funding source or money source or set new laws and regulations for them to go by in order for them to get the money and funding, then the organization might then have to renege and go back on their proposals and promises that they made to the people, saying that, oh, you have more power over your own privacy. But in order for them to get funding, they're going to have to lessen that or at least lie to you in order, to, in order for the, the company to still get its money. But we must pay attention, of course, to the organizations and corporations that are supporting them, not only financially, but in other ways as well. And then who are supporting those organizations and corporations. Freedom Pop, which calls its phone a Snowden phone, which Snowden we know is the whistleblower of the NSA, National Security Agency, allows customers to mask their identities by paying anonymously with Bitcoin. Bitcoin is an innovative payment, pretty new, uh, popularly categorized as digital currency. It lets them switch phone numbers as often as they like. The CEO says switching the phone numbers would help keep uh, uh, the protection of the users. <laughs> but we also, we also must remember back in uh, January of 2014 of this year, the federal government hauled in about 30,000 units of this Bitcoin, this digital currency. Okay, It was worth $27 million at the time. The government gave the currency some legitimacy. Okay. After trading it in for legal paper currency, the American dollar. So they gave it legitimacy. So it's actually uh, now looked upon as something that's valuable. Black phone, they had a uh, they have I guess two phones, a black phone and a lighter, a lighter phone of some other color. But they say the black phone will give users a measure of privacy and control they've never had before. But it says here, the company don't run around saying it's NSA proof, national security agency proof. You see. The black phone is available through Dutch carrier KPN in the Netherlands, Belgium, and in Germany. No U.S. carriers have agreed to sell the phone because all U.S. Carri uh, carriers are indebted. They are in bed with secret agencies such as the CIA and the NSA. They have contracts. They can't do it anyway. But they probably will try to figure out something, of course, you know, that won't uh, go against the contract. Okay, Though it can be hooked to AT&T or T-Mobile, which are both part of the, uh, being funded by NQTEL, the investment arm of the CIA. For internet browsing and search, both phones, the black one and the lighter color one, use third-party browsers and search engines. They don't collect data on their users. Advertisers, that's the key word, advertisers, will have no idea what you have searched. You know, they're in a newspaper. They want to make sure they give you who it is. It's not going to be able to search you. Advertisers, not the government corporations and organizations. You see, they still can be. They still can get involved, you know, because it says here it is built on Google, <laughs> Google's Android platform. And Google is a definite company, no doubt. It's being funded by the CIA, NQTEL, the investment arm of the CIA. It's no doubt being uh, funded by by that CIA investment arm which generally allows users to permit an app to access their information, or none of it. But a black phone, but the black phone user could allow an app to access his contact list, but not his location. Freedom Pops sends an alert to users to let them know that the app may be 
taking their data. Okay. The phone creators acknowledge that some apps, such as Maps, would not work as well without access to the user's location. Both phones disable Wi-Fi connections by default, which will block systems that track people's movements in stores, stadiums, and airports. Users can restore Wi-Fi connections as they like and whatever they, whatever they choose. But mind you that there are other ways that the government can keep eye on you. They have already talked about the license plates, as we see many states having license plates that look more futuristic. You see, having nanotechnology built into it, therefore they can track where you go with your car and your vehicle. And all the vehicle information is then tracked in the, obviously in the driver license or the uh, yeah the license plates of the car and the driver license as well. As we see, many states are looking futuristic with the driver license, and there's microchips involved in there as well, nanotechnology inside the driver license as well, that can track you wherever you go, because wherever you go, of course, you need your identity, right? Passports and things of that nature. 